Hi and welcome to this video, VTech Applied Science Level 3. Uh, I'm going to be going through writing an evaluation since it appears in multiple assignments, typically at the end of them for the distinction criteria. I'll probably be mentioning things that are more specific to the first assignment for this, but they can be applied generally to all assignments for chemistry and even with physics and biology if they require an evaluation. So an evaluation isn't simply just sort of listing a series of improvements you can make to the practical, like what some students do. There's a bit more to it than that, so we'll go through a few points that you need to consider when writing it out. The first one is, was your test fair? So in terms of this, what we should be considering, when you're doing a practical, you will have an independent variable that you are changing, you will have a dependent variable that you are measuring, and then you should have control variables. So the control variables help ensure the practical is fair. So some control variables as an example for the first practical. You could be thinking things like same equipment. Because if you change from one burette to another burette, for example, if you've not cleaned it out, then there would be a difference between those. If you change from, say, using a, a di digital pH probe to the old um, analog style ones, then you'll get differences introduced because of the equipment. You could be thinking things as well if um, the experiment you've done, if it's going to be affected by temperature and so forth, then those would need to be variables that would be controlled too. So ensuring the temperature of the room hasn't changed, for example. So generally with this, you want to be answering yes to was your test fair and then actually going through what control variables you've got in place to ensure that fairness. Next thing is how accurate. The results are. So with this, the first thing I would start at doing is doing an experimental error calculation. So for that, what we should be doing is our calculated value minus the real value divided by the real times 100 to get into a percentage. It doesn't matter whether it's... Um, Positive or negative, yes, some people freak out. If it's a negative 10%, it just means you're 10% below the true value. If it's a positive 10%, then obviously 10% above the true value. But the sign can give you some indication on where you've maybe went wrong in the practical. But this gives us a quantitative value that we can use for stating how accurate our practical was. So generally, you want this to be smaller. Smaller, the better. If you've got an experimental error that's like 80, 90 percent, something's really screwed up there. Whereas for students, typically um, 10, maybe 20 percent, then you're usually fine with that. <clears throat> so what we'll then lead into with how accurate our results are, some of the error will always be because of the equipment and the other it will be because of something that you've likely done wrong. So first thing we should start with is doing an equipment error. So for the equipment error, um, again, just very quick here, you can look up on PowerPoints and stuff how to do these with some examples. What we'd be looking at is the error over the reading that you've taken from it, times 100 again for a percent. So just as a quick example, 
error on a balance, uh, 0 0.01. If I've used it to measure out three grams, 0 0.01 divided by three times 100 gives me my percent for that. What you'll then need to do is sum all of the errors of the equipment that's actually been measuring something out. So, for example, if you've used the burette, the pipette, as well as the balance, you would need to have all of those summed up to give you a total equipment error. What you can then do is compare these. So, compare the experimental to the equipment error. Generally, the equipment error is going to be a few percent experimental. Like I said, 10% above. If the experimental is below the equipment error, you've done the practical perfectly. Um, all of the errors generally responsible from the equipment. Whereas, you know, again, most students, 99.9% .9 of the time, experimental will be larger than the equipment. If it's a bit above, you can say your results are accurate. If it's quite a large bit above, then not accurate. <clears throat> so once we've talked about how accurate they are, um, we need to go through how reliable the set of results was in terms of the practical that we've carried out. What we should be thinking in for this is generally you want to say it was reliable because we've done things like repeats, hopefully, again, based on your practical. Um, did you clean the equipment properly? You cleaned it out with the chemical that it was going to be filled with so that if there was any other chemicals in there, they would have reacted with it and then being removed when you've emptied it into the sink. So that's why we clean it with the chemical we are going to put in there rather than just water. Water would just dilute it. It doesn't get rid of the material within there fully. So if you didn't clean it out fully and there was some chemical in there that was going to react with the chemical you're filling the burette with, that would obviously neutralize some of it it would lower the concentration of the chemical in the burette, and therefore you would need to add more to neutralize the substance you've got in the conical flask. And if you're needing to add more of it, what you're going to be end up thinking is substance in the conical flask is highly concentrated, when in actual fact it's not. Just you've neutralized some of the chemical in the burette by having a dirty burette. Um, sticking with that theme, you could consider were the air bubbles in the burette, how did that affect it? We've got parallax error. White tile for helping you uh, visualize the color change. In terms of repeats, did you manage to get concordant results? So if you did, obviously that helps state it's reliable. If you didn't get concordant results, then again, that's a tick against you. And what we should be thinking of is how we can improve the practical to try and get concordant results. Um, just to skip back, one thing that I've just remembered, if we're talking about controls, just to give you another point, since we've said same equipment with the controls, when we were using that color change for the indicator, you could even have something like that in. So that was a control amount. We were changing the concentration of the sodium carbonate and using that to determine the concentration of the HCl. But we kept the indicator the same. So back onto this. 
Um, did you get enough data to justify it? So, for example, when you were doing your colorimetry and you had your calibration curve, did you get enough points or were they perhaps a bit all over the place? And maybe you should have done more of your calibration to try and get some set points and get a, a better R squared value going through these. Um, if you didn't get concordant results with your titration, you could talk about, you know, do more of those in terms of the repeats to try and get the concordant results. So with all of these, when, when we've talked about was our test fair, how accurate our results are, was the practical setup itself to be reliable in terms of the set of results? You know, here we've got precision, did you get concordant? We've talked about accuracy in terms of how close we were to the true result. And what we want to look for is an overall statement with how confident you are in your results. So this is up to you, um, based on what we've talked through. It you know, should flow and match with it. If it doesn't, then you get penalised for this. But if you've been talking about, yes, it was set up fair, I've got a low experimental error, I did repeat, I got concurrent results, um, I had enough data for it all, and yes, you should be answering your confident in your results. There is, however, always room for improvement. So... Even if you've said you're confident, you should be thinking about how you can improve your confidence. If you're not confident, then obviously this list would be a lot longer. So from here, no matter if you're answering yes or no, you should consider improvement to get a better confidence. So, for example, with colorimetry, the one thing that students tend to do is when they're handling the tube is they leave big smudged fingerprints on the side, and that would affect the set of results. You've also got the issue of the thickness of the glass. With this, can vary from tube to tube. So we should be trying to make sure we've got a uniform thickness because both of these would affect the amount of light going through and change uh, the reading what, that we're getting from the colorimeter. Uh, when we're doing the pH curve and we had our graph plotted with the steep drop, if you only measured this every five cubic centimeters or so, you wouldn't get a nice curve drop measured like this. So what you should be thinking about is how often were you measuring in terms of the volume being added? And how could you improve it? Well, if I take a lot more readings, then as you can see, I should get a much better curve going through them. So have a consider about how much volume you are adding, how could you improve it, you know, go from five cubic centimeters to two or two to one, for example. Um, yeah, so I'll not list through all improvement extensively because depending upon the practicals you've done, you'd need to consider things unique to that. So that's it for an evaluation. Hopefully that helped with the distinction criteria for the chemistry assignments and any of the others. So like I said, consider was your test fair? Look at variables, what you've held constant, how accurate your results were, put it in a quantitative manner. How reliable your set of results were, consider concordant, repeats, things like that, what you've done to get a reliable set of results. So the air bubbles, for example, hopefully you made sure you removed or there was none of them because that would affect how much you are adding from the burette. Getting rid of them means good tick for reliability. 
reading on eye level for the burette. Then that removed parallax error. Again, helped improve reliability. And then overall statement, how confident you are. Just yes, confident in my result, blah, blah, carried out well. Or no, accuracy was terrible. I can't remember if I checked for air bubbles, things like that. And then improvements, again, as I said, a few examples here. Did you clean the tube? Did you clean the burette with the chemical you were going to fill it with? And so on. And that's it. So thank you. I shall call it there.